pelvic pain is something that can affect anywhere between 14 to over 30% of women at any time during their life. And many women struggle throughout their life with chronic pelvic pain. And something that you may not know is that it's not just isolated to women. Men also experience pelvic pain and are often at a loss about what to do about it. Today on the Girlfriend Doctor podcast, I'm going to bring you an expert and we're having conversation about this issue of pelvic pain, how we can heal from it, both women and men throughout childbearing years, through menopause, and for the rest of our life, because this is an area that so many people don't recognize can affect them in other ways. If we are chronically in pain, that's going to decrease our intimacy, that's going to decrease our mobility, our activity, and also our sense of self-confidence. And often it leads to other musculoskeletal issues, problems with arthritis, hip pain, hip replacements, joint pain, and the list goes on. It's important if you're experiencing it to recognize that no pelvic pain is ever normal. No pelvic pain is ever normal. You deserve to live pain free. Well, hello everyone. It is Dr. Anna Kabeca and I am the Girlfriend Doctor. It is my mission and my passion to help women live better lives before, during, and after menopause and for the men who love them too. So welcome to the Girlfriend Doctor podcast, an intimate place for intimate conversation. And today I am sharing with you, sharing with you one of my girlfriends, Dr. Brianne Grogan. She has nearly 15 million views on YouTube. She has a five-star reviewed podcast and book, and she is a leading voice in the field of pelvic health and wellness. She is loved by her viewers for her down-to-earth, compassionate approach and for making pelvic floor fitness there, pelvic floor fitness fun and mainstream and accessible. She I've interviewed her before. I love her mission. I love her message and I love her authenticity. So join me in welcoming Dr. Brianne Brogan to our podcast here today. Hey Bri. Yay. Thank you so much, Anna, for having me on your show. I just so appreciate you and all the beautiful work you're doing in the world. I love our connection. Oh, I love it too. I love it too. So let's talk a little bit about your background on the focus, how you got into this focus of pelvic pain. Well, really, I would say I worked with people, a lot of people who had pain when I was working as a clinical physical therapist. Um, Now, I've been mostly online since my family and I moved across the world several years ago, and I've been doing most of my work just through online teaching and connecting with people in that way. I would say that I really started noticing this huge, huge need for more conversation and education around pelvic tension and pain uh, when I was noticing kind of what people were wanting from my YouTube channel. So I really realized that those were the videos that were getting the the most hits and the most results. The people were saying, oh my gosh, this is what I was looking for. This is what I needed. This has helped me so much. I, you know, I was in so much pain and now I'm feeling great. And so I, I don't only focus on pelvic pain. That's not at all my sole focus, but I really try to strive for a very well-rounded approach to pelvic health and healing. And pelvic pain is a big, big topic for both men and women. Oh, it's so true. I know. And it's, um, it is one of these areas though, that people don't like to talk about or feel like they've gone from provider to provider to provider. I had a woman one time come to me and I was actually consulting at another physician's office at the time. So he brought me in to talk with this one client and she'd been, she was in, in Florida in the Sarasota area. And um, that's where she was living currently, but she'd been to doctors in California and New York and had persistent pelvic pain. But, but the amazing thing is no one ever referred her to a pelvic floor physical therapist and, or, you know, a chiropractor or for manipulation or acupuncture. And these ancillary modalities are very, very helpful. So with my training as an osteopath and especially in gynecology and obstetrics using osteopathic manipulation, it was, I, it, you know, was able to determine that she had, you know, a, a significant amount of psoas muscle tendon uh, tightening as well as pudendal 
constrictions. And so that an, an internal release that can be done and you can show your partner how to do it. It can show, you know, easily show people how to do this release. And so that helps so much with couples, especially if they have, um, pain with intercourse or difficulty with vaginismus or penetration. And it's just a huge relief. And she said that was the first time in years she'd been without pain. And it was that easy, that easy when you know what's going on, but that is definitely a maintenance thing. So we still have to get to the structure and, and the underlying issues, but for a quick relief and um, it's, you know, there's some things that can be done. So always looking to broaden our, our um, medicine bag, so to speak. Absolutely. Yeah. That reminds me of one of my patients as well when I was working clinically and we did a lot of work with the internal release. She was able to work with her partner as well, but she had um, been a virgin before marriage and she and her partner, uh, when, after they got married, they were unable to have sex. And that's really when she came to me. And she'd also been through a bit of a runaround with doctors, not taking her seriously, just telling her to have a glass of wine, to mm -hmm. relax. Yep. Those kinds of stories. And came to me, we were able to successfully treat her and she came back, uh, you know, nine months later with her brand new baby. And she said, this wouldn't have been possible without this work, you know, mm -hmm. and that just, that's like, that's the story that will never leave my heart mm -hmm. that this is really life changing stuff. It's life changing stuff. When you have pain in that area, it really does you always say, Anna, this is your most important part of piece of real estate on your body is the it pelvic is. floor and the perineum, that, that area. It's so true. I mean, it's literally life-changing. It's, it gives life and you can't have sex. You can't have a baby, you know, if you are having vaginismus, it's just going to be very, very problematic. So that's one of the, the scopes is vaginismus and female pelvic pain and some of those issues, but men can have these issues too, for sure. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about pelvic floor dysfunction and, you know, and what is the difference between female and male pelvic floor and the, the pelvic pain that they experience? Yeah. So men, oh, because I definitely want you to hit on the fact before I forget yeah. is that men can do Kegel exercises. So we'll yeah. talk about that. Okay. For sure. For sure. And it's, it's one of those things where it's like, well, do men have a pelvic floor? <laughs> because we talk about the pelvic floor with women a lot. And it's, I feel like it's getting pretty widely known now talking about the pelvic floor and pelvic health. Um, you know, women are told to do their Kegel exercises before they're, you know, when they're pregnant or after they are, have given birth, but men, it's really never discussed, but yes, men do have pelvic floor muscles. Um, they're really, you know, similar in location and there's some similarities for sure, but the, there are some serious differences between the female and male pelvic floor as well. Of course, the, the female has more, um, you know, openings, essentially bigger openings in their pelvic floor, the levator ani muscles that go around the uh, urethra from the uh, bladder, but also the vagina. Men obviously do not have a vagina. And then there's the anus. So the men do have the same basic formation of pelvic floor muscles, and they can get tight and tense just like female pelvic floor muscles can, but they're just a, some slight differences. A male pelvis is also a little bit narrower than a female pelvis. So there's even some bony structural differences between the two. Um, but yeah, really, in, as far as treatment goes, um, it's quite similar. So even though there are differences, there's quite a lot of similarity between treatment for male and female pelvic floor dysfunction. As far as calming the basics as far as the basics here calming the nervous system you know really amping up the parasympathetic nervous system that rest and digest the 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 calming soothing relaxing aspect is the, the fundamental level when it comes to both men and women and treating pain and muscular tension yeah yeah i want to just i'm um, gonna for those that are um watching us right now just share this image of the pelvic floor in men and women i mean it is so i mean it's, it's so similar you were just looking at the muscles of the pelvic floor mm -hmm. so if you think the bladder for women sits on top of the vagina essentially and the uterus and that whole area and that is um, part of our normal anatomy it's supported with a tremendous amount of connection to connective tissue that has to stay healthy as well as muscle. 
and, um, and connected through fascia, which gets stiffer and um, uh, less flexible as we age and can in and of itself cause pain. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important thing to recognize too, especially with pelvic floor pain and discomfort. Mm -hmm. So we're able to see, you know, the similarities in, in both male and female anatomy to, to a quite a large degree. Yep, absolutely. And then releasing and, and um, mobilizing the fascia and working really the entire area. I really find it to be extremely helpful in both men and women to, of course, not just focus on the pelvic floor. Of course, that the internal release and the deep work really working on the pelvic floor muscles themselves, the more superficial pelvic diaphragm and then the deep levator, levator ani muscles is very important. But so too is, you know, the abdominal area, all of the hips and glutes, the, the adductors, the inner thigh muscles, really everything in that core of your body, that center of your body is going to potentially be affected from the tension in your pelvic floor muscles themselves. It can pull other areas out of alignment and it can be very helpful to, again, work on that fundamental foundational relaxation response, and then also stretching and releasing and mobilizing the tissues surrounding the pelvic floor. So let's talk about that. How do you help people in this way? Like what are the ways to release and to relax those muscles? <laughs> yeah, well, I have, like I, we could just be able to do it, right? But right. it'd be nice if we could just snap our fingers and say, relax. And it doesn't exactly. always, you know, it doesn't always work that way. Um, I have my little tank top on that's for my, uh, our, our program, a program that I'm working on for pelvic pain. And it says healing comes from within. And that really is speaking to that mind body connection and beginning. I mean, one of the, the best places to begin is just with breathing. And it sounds so simple. And I know you've covered this many times on your podcast, Anna, and you know, talk about it a lot as well, but the deep breathing, um, slowing down the breath, lengthening the exhales, focusing on really bringing down the, uh, again, the nervous system, just bringing everything down is the first step. And one of the relaxation processes that we do like to do is based on the paradoxical relaxation method by Anderson and Wise, um, now, we're, we don't teach their protocol. They have their own protocol, but it's based on this idea of, it's, it's called paradoxical relaxation, where basically you slow down the breathing, you bring the attention to the present moment, presence to the body, really, and you begin to first focus your attention, actually starting on areas that are outside of your pelvic floor. So you don't go directly to the pelvic floor if pelvic pain and tension is the issue. And again, this is great for men and women. So you may begin, you know, on your kind of with a body scan, really beginning with your neck and your upper body areas, and you can move to your lower body all over your body, but focusing your attention on these different areas of your body, not honing in directly on the pelvic floor right away. And first bringing your attention to just relaxing the tension that can easily relax. So focus on effortless letting go. So it's like you're letting go without pushing to make it happen, mm -hmm. which is interesting because that kind of brings in the energy, the, you know, masculine versus feminine energy. It's a very masculine energy to sort of push and try to make things happen. I'm going to make this tension go away, you know, in a very hard driving manner. We're doing a very feminine approach to releasing the tension. So we're really just sort of effortlessly releasing into okay, there's tension here, let's let it go. Let's see what can let go naturally. And then with the residual tension that's still gonna be there because it's not gonna let go right away, all of it, that you just accept it. You accept it and you move on. And that's the paradoxical relaxation is you are relaxing by the very nature of accepting that there is tension there. So it's an interesting process of sort of, you know, trying to relax, but then accepting what is. And just breathing and being there and you know what we resist persists as they say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so this is really speaking to that and and using that method yeah no i see that and um and that is just a good all-around de-stressor right we can do that especially what are you seeing <laughs> with with quarantine and these years you know these months that we've spent inside what are you seeing that's causing more pelvic floor dysfunction 
people with pelvic pain are having a lot more pelvic pain right now. <laughs> mm. um, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think one reason is for some people, movement is harder. Now people aren't able to get to the yoga classes they used to love going to, or even just go on walks as easily as they wanted to. Just everything has changed. Some people really need to go to group fitness classes, yes. yoga classes. I personally don't. Some people are fine working out on their own and staying mo moving, but other people, it doesn't work. My husband's like that. He really needs a group. And so I feel for those people. So I think there's less mobility. And I always love to say motion is lotion. It's why I love hip circles. It's why yes. I love, you know, people just moving their bodies and, you know, walking, just gentle movement. It doesn't have to be hardcore, but it can be hard to do, especially if, especially if you have pain. It's like the last thing you want to do is move. And if it's harder because things are closed, then that's going to be a problem. And then, of course, in addition, there's the stress that goes along with this quarantine, not, you know, not, under, not knowing what is going on, what's going to happen in the future. There's financial stress for some people. So, uh, and then the, the very obvious thing of people maybe not being able to go to their physical therapy appointments like they were able to do before to get the manual releases and the manual therapy. So all of that combined is making this a very challenging time for people with pelvic pain. So what can people do at home? Well, I, again, just starting with the deep breathing, starting with that relaxation body scanning technique um, are two really, really great keys. Um, just reminding yourself that outside, so pain, pain science is a really huge topic and probably not something to, I mean, I'm certainly no pain scientist, but I do know quite a bit about the, the mindset of pain. It can be helpful to realize that when pain is chronic, as is the case in most people that we see with pelvic pain and tension, like you said, they've been through the ringer, they've been to all the specialists, nobody knows what's wrong, they've had imaging done, they've tried medication, there's no acute injury right now, there's no acute reason for this issue. Uh, you know, it's not like they've just had a fall and so their muscles are seizing up, you know, after the fall. Maybe they had a fall, but maybe it happened 12 years ago or 20 years ago or whatever. It's a chronic condition at this point. And so even though our brain is wanting to protect us by tensing up the muscles and giving us this pain response, it's not necessarily something that, you know, we need to basically remind our brain that we're no longer in danger. Mm -hmm. And even just knowing that can be helpful. So it's not that it's in your head. It's not that you're making up the pain at all. It's just that there's some responses that we need to unlearn. And so reminding our, bo our bodies and minds of our safety, again, by that deep breathing, by that body scanning, uh, and also stretching. I have a ton of free videos on my YouTube channel. I have an entire playlist dedicated to pelvic pain and tension. Uh, there's many people out there and you know, courses and, and programs and um, folks out there who have videos as well that can be helpful, but stretching can be so helpful and making it a daily practice. And I have more that I can say, so I guess I'll just keep talking if you're okay with that, Anna. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm nodding okay. my head because I've just been having a restriction in my right hip. So I've really been working on it these last couple of weeks, chiropractor, massage and stretching, which I should have been doing more of all along because, you know, with book launch, with the yes. way we're working from home, it's sedentary and muscles have just really cramped up. So between the ITB band, right, and the uh, psoas muscle, my right hip is, is tight. And so I'm now sitting with one leg um, curled up under me Indian style so that my knee rotates externally out. Mm -hmm. And I can stretch out this as you're talking. I'm like, okay, stretch my muscles. <laughs> but out, even, out. yes. It, well, and even when you're doing like a body, a body scan, so this would be a little different during that relaxation scan that I was mentioning, you really want to be in the moment and focused on just relaxing your muscles. But it's kind of cool when you notice imbalances like that in your body to do a body scan and to start from the top of your head, because you probably have other imbalances in your shoulder and your, the way you're holding your head, different things are probably going to pop up as well because the whole body is, is connected, of course. But I find it really interesting to scan from head to toe and just go, okay, what, where am I jacked up? Because almost everybody is jacked up on one side in some way. I'll do a body scan and realize that my head kind of tilts to the side a little bit, just naturally. It just naturally does. 
one of my shoulders is, is elevated just naturally. And so then I can sink it. I can sink that shoulder that's elevated, just release those muscles. I also have a jacked up right hip. <laughs> so I just sit in my chair, however it is, and I try to sink the hip into the socket. So this takes a level of body awareness that not everybody will be ready for or you know has right now. But you can totally get to that point where you just sit in a, in a comfortable upright position or you can lie down um, and just feel into your body and see where there are some imbalances and see if you can let them go. And again, that's kind of a ninja level, <laughs> ninja level oh, yeah. area. If you're in a lot of pain, you're probably maybe not going to be able to do that right away. So just the more general relaxation scan will be helpful. But if you, Anna, for you, I'm sure you probably can feel some of those imbalances in your body. If oh, you yeah, do. I'm as good as anyone at ignoring them too, but yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> and so it now that awareness, you know, because yeah, you let it go sure. too long. Mm -hmm. And do your hip circles too. So yes, I love my hip circle. <laughs> There's that. But another another thing that I just wanted to bring up is um, to talk about it, to tell to tell someone about it. It's one of the first things that I, I think that men and women both have a hard time talking about this um, condition about conditions regarding their pelvis at all. It's it's sort of a taboo subject still, even though awareness is really growing. Um, it's still something that can be hard to kind of admit or talk to about. So, you know, just knowing and, and honoring, okay, there is something wrong here. There is something that I'd like to fix. Um, talking to somebody who's a specialist, if you can get a, like a phone consultation, if you want to talk to a provider um, or, or see a provider in person, if that's possible in your area right now, or just simply open up to like your, your wife. If you're, if you're in a, if you're a man and you, a husband and wife, relationship or a partnership relationship of some sort, tell your partner about it and just let them know the first step for men can often just be talking about it and not just holding it in because talking is a very feminine energy and, and communicating is a very feminine thing. And women have a hard enough time talking about this part of their body. Men tend to have a very hard time talking about this part of their body. So that's a pretty important foundational step too. I agree. And um, one of the things you talk about a lot is the differences between masculine energy and feminine energy. I'd love for you to, to share with us about these differences and similarities. Yeah, for sure. And so everybody has masculine and feminine energy within them. It's, it's just a, a way to describe the duality of energy that we all have in our bodies. And the masculine energy tends to be more of a focused um, hard driving goal oriented energy. Uh, there's so much more, but I'll just leave it at that to give you an idea. The feminine energy is usually seen as the more receptive energy and it's usually the more nurturing, calming, um, energy. There's also a lot of other things that goes along with that as well, but we'll just keep it really basic and keep it to that. And so the masculine energy can often be when you have any type of pain or tension condition can really, it's one reason we can develop these pain and tension conditions is too much hard driving, go, go, go. Let's just keep going, keep pushing through um, energies that, that, that hard driving energy can perpetuate the tension and pain that we have in our body. Uh, oftentimes we'll have the, the pain, whatever it's, it's come from, there will be some potentially an initiating event that will make your body tense up like um, to protect ourselves. So oftentimes there'll be some kind of initial event that makes that happen. Although sometimes it can just spontaneously occur that people develop pain and they start tensing up and then that causes more pain and more tension, which causes more pain and more tension and it goes on and on. So that's the cycle that, that happens. But that protective response is actually a masculine energy and that tensing of the muscles is a masculine energy. And then if we have to live our life and continue go, go, going, you know, a lot of the, the men that come to me are um, entrepreneurs with very high stress jobs, salespeople with very high stress jobs. Um, I, I've also worked with a, p a piano player who practices piano all day long and he's very tense when he's playing his, his songs and, you know, performing. So he's performing and doing. 
And also I, I worked with a martial arts um, instructor, very, you know, intense, physically intense, active job. And these guys are just having to push through their pain. Even though they have this pain, they're having to push through. And then on top of that, they have, they're realizing, okay, I've got this issue. I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> And I'm going to beat this thing. And so I'm going to make this list of things to do and I'm going to hit this thing hard and I'm going to get it done. And that doesn't always, it's not always what we need in this situation of healing our pelvic pain. In many ways, we all, whether we're male or female, and if that story kind of resonates with you, uh, we need to tap back into the feminine energy, that, that slowing down, that nurturing energy. You know, many people I know, they, they will try to do Kegel exercises to counteract this pelvic pain that they have. Well, I've got pain in here, so I better move those muscles and, and strengthen my muscles, you know? I've got to do something about this, but really what we need is actually to release the muscles. Kegels are really the last thing you want to do if you have pelvic pain intention. So it's, it's harnessing and, and knowing that there is that balance of masculine and feminine within us all. Uh, most people are a little bit overdeveloped on the masculine side, whether you're a male or a female in this day and age, just because we are such a fast paced, intense society in general. And so pretty much anyone can benefit from balancing those two energetics within our body. Mm -hmm. um, but particularly if you have a pain condition it's really important to bring in that feminine, bring in that nurturing, bring in that slowing down, that receptivity, and even that little bit of, as I spoke to earlier, almost accepting where you're at right now. Not that we're succumbing to it at all, but we're accepting our situation right now. We're breathing into it and we're using that idea of just sort of um, effortlessly letting go and then accepting that residual tension and breathing into it and slowly by slowly incrementally doing these stretches and breathing techniques and other myofascial release techniques, other things we can do, that's going to help unwind things. But it's not something you can throw a bunch of hardcore exercises at or <laughs> hardcore stress at. That's just going to make it worse. Does that make sense? I was kind of all over the place. Oh, no, there. absolutely. It's like we can't power through it. This is something no, we cannot be powering exactly. through because it creates more, you know, constriction in yeah. the muscle too. Now, what about like using, what other things have you used with it for um, helping with pelvic pain? Uh, you know, any uh, certain, I know we have pelvic floor release, some myofascial exercise, and, I, and you need to explain what that is because okay. that's really important. And probably my, some of my, favorite like muscle energy exercise we used to call it that in osteopathic uh, medical school we call, we'd use muscle energy exercises so you know stretching the reverse the you know the opposing muscle group mm -hmm. and that's just so beneficial in relieving you know some of the the strain the constriction but I want I want you to talk about that and also you know because as women get older they're getting these and for men too but these fascial issues and how you know hormones can help and what other things that you found have been helpful um, as a complementary therapy. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I, there's internal work that people can do with a therapist or, or on their own, as you spoken to earlier, either with your partner, partner's help, or you can get like a TheraWand. There's different uh, wands and devices mm -hmm. that you can use to help with manual stretching internally of your pelvic floor. Um, so that's certainly something that can be explored. Uh, externally, you can use your hands or you can use uh, little massage balls. You can find little small balls that you can kind of melt over. You can roll your body on foam rollers. All of those things can be really helpful to just release and mobilize the, the tissues in your body. There's muscles in our body, there's bones in our body, and then there's fascia that surrounds it all. And fascia is just a connective tissue that, that sort of encapsulates everything and basically makes it so that our whole body hooks together by this sort of body stocking of tissue that surrounds everything. Everything's just kind of suspended in this sea of fascia in our body. So that's one reason, going back to hip circles, again, I can't seem to do <laughs> an interview with you, Anna, without talking about hip circles, I love but it. it's one reason I love them so much is because you are circling your, your 
hips, um, like you're just doing a big circle over, over the ground, and it's moving everything. You're getting that stretch to the side, the stretch to the back, the stretch to the other side and the front. You're moving the center of your body, which is ultimately moving tissues all the way up to the top of your head and down to the bottom of your feet because of what I just said about everything being connected. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when things are restricted in one area, it's going to pull things in another area out of place. In fact, that's one theory of prolapse, which we're, we're really getting way off topic here, but no, but this is an, an important issue. topic. Many oh, women super. suffer with this. So oh let's go into it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, prolapse is a matter of the pelvic organs, I, I always describe it as the pelvic organs hanging a little low, either the bladder or the uterus or the rectum or all three, um, or, the, or the top of the vagina if you've had a hysterectomy, but basically things sort of fall out of position. But sometimes part of the reason for that is a, a fascial restriction in somewhere in your body, in your hip, in your hip area, you know, not your hip, hip joint, but you know, somewhere in your hip musculature area or somewhere in your hip area somewhere in your abdominal area, something like that is restricted and it causes everything to kind of pull and pull out of place. So it's all a puzzle piece in there. Everything hooks together and, and um, sits together like pieces of a puzzle. So if one thing is restricted, it's going to sort of pull and tug on all sorts of organs and tissues in your body. And that could potentially cause part of a, the pulling out of place and could contribute to prolapse. And pelvic pain and tension, I mean, again, it's, it's very interconnected and many people have multiple issues. Mm -hmm. In fact, speaking of prolapse, that's another reason in itself for female pelvic pain and tension is because if your organs are out of place, hanging a little low, again, however we wanna describe it, your body can respond by squeezing around them, ultimately around them, ultimately your body is wanting to squeeze to to support them and keep everything in and up. But oftentimes if things are out of place enough, it's gonna end up kind of squeezing around the prolapse. And so it's not gonna help support your prolapse and your muscles are just gonna be super tense and then get fatigued and tired and they're not gonna work well. So yeah. Oh my gosh, obviously so, I could talk about this all it day. Is, it is so important. So we're gonna go back yeah. into the therapeutic intervention. You know, yeah. is, is, is doing um, hip circles is Hips working with a pelvic floor physical therapist is, mm -hmm. is really breathing into the muscle and fascia around those. So you're stretching, you're stretching the muscle and you're stretching the opposing muscle groups and, mm -hmm. and working on, but even more that pelvic floor, relaxing your muscles of the pelvic floor and increasing your mobility around it. Right. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then again, just self massage, you can massage your abdominal area, um, you can massage your inner thighs. You can actually use your fingers and hold on to your, they're kind of hard, interesting to find. If you sort of hinge forward at your hips and use your fingers, your sitting bones, your ischial tuberosities, you can wrap your fingers, kind of hook them up and under and pull gently out to the side on one side and then release and then pull gently out to, it's not gonna be a big movement, they really don't move much, but you're gonna feel a gentle pulling pressure and that's gonna stretch the tissues of the pelvic floor itself. If you really wanna get in there, it's gonna stretch and you're gonna feel it pretty strongly um, in the Where tissue. are you moving those muscles again? Where are you moving? So you're actually just hooking your fingers. I have a pelvis model. I can grab the pelvis model. I know not everyone can see that on the podcast, but. Right. Um, We'll have this on YouTube too. I have multiple pelvis models, but this one has the organs in it. But you can actually use your fingers and sort of hook on, because you can see this is a female pelvis model and it has all of the um, pelvic floor muscles, the more external and the deeper layer. Um, but you can actually use your fingers and kind of hook around right here and right here. And just gently, it's, it's a gentle, gentle, just sort of bringing your fingers in and gently pulling. And it's pulling and stretching on, on these, some of these little, small, more external muscles that actually hook to the sitting bone itself. But then it's also, these don't necessarily hook right into the sitting bone itself, but they're real close. So you're going to be just gently um, pulling on that area, and it can be a nice release. You can do it when you're in happy baby pose and your feet are above you, and you can 
hook your fingers around your sitting bones and just gently even just massage in that area. It doesn't even have to be a pulling sensation like I'm saying, just a massaging into that area can be helpful. Or like I said, if you're standing, you can hinge forward at your waist just a little bit and wrap your arms around and kind of hold on to like feel into that area mm -hmm. and use your fingertips and just kind of massage around and even gently pull your sitting bone to one side and then your other sitting bone to the other side. Very gentle. It can really ache if you do it too hard. This is a very, very gentle maneuver, but it's kind of a nice starting point for folks who don't necessarily want to go for the internal work right away. Yeah, no, that's really good. And, and even thinking about massages, if people are getting regular massages, asking for an abdominal massage. Yes. So oftentimes, you know, unless you ask, many therapists don't do it, but you're in Germany right now. You do, you know, abdominal massage, chest massage, everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I that's really, you know, uh, along the buttocks. And that's really, you know, exactly what that's for, fascial release, to release yeah. tension in the muscles, to... Uh, increase circulation in the muscles and all of all of that area as long as you feel comfortable of course with your therapist For so sure. that's a, well, that's and, a and even just massaging the shoulders and the upper neck area i mean again because it's all connected sometimes just releasing that upper body can help kind of bring that relaxation response down and ultimately help with the pelvic floor sensations as well so at the very least give yourself a shoulder massage and that can help down lower as well yes yeah definitely so, um, Brianne, what other things do you want to make sure our audience knows about and then please share where they can find you, your YouTube channel and your website and connecting with you more and working with you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess one other thing, pretty big scope again, but it's just something to kind of put into the, to the mind is that there are other reasons for perpetuating pelvic pain for men and women. And one can be what you're eating. I mean, again, our, our guts are so connected to everything, really. We're learning our gut is sort of the center of everything, our, our brain and our gut. And really both of those things, the brain and the gut are involved in this whole conversation we've been having is <laughs> for pelvic pain. So we need to calm the nervous system. We need to remember um, that we're not necessarily in immediate danger right now and we can calm our system. That's the brain connection. The gut connection can be if we have an inflamed digestive tract because we're sensitive to a certain food and we're eating it constantly, that can definitely contribute to pelvic pain as well. So um, I just encourage people to take a look at their diet to you know, clean things up if they're eating a lot of processed foods and you know, white refined sugars and that kind of things. Clean that there, up. There, my audience is eating keto green, but no, yes, this, this everybody we all need this reminder. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Keto Green, keep with Anna's books. She's got the plan, so follow that. And beyond that, um, you know, just make sure, and your plans are fabulous for this next step too. You naturally don't use gluten and dairy in Keto Green 16. I know because I've read your book and it's awesome. Okay. And so naturally, that's going to be a really great, almost an elimination diet for folks who want to see if maybe they do, maybe they do have a sensitivity to gluten a lot of people do not everybody but a lot of people do and so removing those things can be very helpful for pain which seems really crazy like how does that affect my pain but it can for sure so yeah. i guess that's the last little tip i'd leave people with and that's huge i'm so glad you mentioned it because even like for vaginal health pelvic floor health men's health erectile health all of that relates to increasing healthy blood flow good connective tissue good um mucosal tissue and but really big is that how our diet affects our blood flow and inflammation and that creates a decrease in how our body functions all the way around we always say erectile dysfunction is a symptom of coronary vascular disease or cardiovascular disease and and you know it shows up in women too but to a much less obvious uh, manifestation but we have to address it and the sooner the better. So getting keto green, it's never too late, it's never too early. That's a really big part. And I, I do wanna thank you so much because we talked about hip circles and in my sexual CPR program, we have your hip circle video where you're teaching our clients and that is just part of the foundational basics that everyone has to watch and do and participate in because that is a part of sexual health, femininity, you know, and it's as hip circles for men too. I do focus on women, y'all, but 
it is for men too. And that's really important for blood flow flexibility. I, Dr. Jeff Life, who I interview for men's sexual health and sexual CPR, he always says a flexible man is a sexual man. <laughs> so and, true. <laughs> and it is so true. It's true for women too, right? And we can't have aches and pains and that limit limits our freedom, you know, and, and our, our pleasure in so many ways. So, um, Thank you, Brianne, and your website again and social handle. For sure. Um, I'm at Femfusion Fitness on Instagram and Facebook, and my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Femfusion Fitness. My website is Femfusion Fitness. And I guess the, <laughs> only, the only thing outside of that is I do have a pelvic pain program yes. um, currently for men, and then there's a, a version coming soon, might be available when this airs even, but it's uh, for women as well. So a version for men and a version for women. And it's a 12 week guided therapeutic um, program that it really incorporates everything we talked about today. Um, so that's called Overcome Pelvic Pain. And you could just go to overcomepelvicpain.com and I'll probably give you a, a link or two, Anna, yeah. if you, okay, perfect. Absolutely, we'll post that in the show notes. And um, if they go to the website, then femfusionfitness.com, they can also see a link to the Overcoming Public Pain course. Yeah, you can absolutely okay. find a link on, on femfusionfitness.com, although it's a little bit, to be honest, I need to work on my uh, website, have some help with that. It's a little bit hard to find. So probably the link that you'll provide for Overcome would be a good one for folks to go to okay. if they want to experience that directly but you can find it through my website. Okay, just, good, good. I might have to give you some coaching there. Make sure you have yeah, a courses please. button, tab, and whatever, so people can find all the amazing stuff you I, offer. Thank you, tech help, Anna. I've got the pelvic health stuff down. It's the tech help that's hard. So. I, I hear you. I hear you. It takes a village for this, too. Well, I thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your energy, your guidance for our audience today, Brianne. Thanks for being here. Oh, okay, I have a flash question for you. So what is your favorite um, activity that you do now in quarantine? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, gosh. Um, you can't say other than hip circles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been definitely, it's just having more time to spend morning coffee with my husband. Mm. And I drink, I, I drink this little special blend of this herbal adaptogenic brew with a little bit of coffee and sometimes some chocolate. You and I have a shared love for, for chocolate when you're not doing keto green 16. I know that, you know, oh, but yeah. it's good. Um, chocolate's good. Yeah. But I just have, I will say I've loved having longer mornings with my husband. So oh. I guess coffee, coffee is my new activity. That's beautiful. Coffee with your husband. I love yeah. it. Well, perfect. Good. So thank you again so much for being with us and for our listeners, Brianne Grogan, Dr. Brianne Grogan, femfusionfitness.com and her um, courses for overcoming pelvic pain, overcomingpelvicpain.com. Overcome. Yeah, just overcome. Overcome pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. overcome overcome pelvic pelvic pain. Pain. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. I always love having these conversations and especially, you know, openly and honestly addressing issues that often aren't discussed. So I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And I encourage you to definitely circle back and check out the videos that Brianne has done, the hip circle videos, as well as her amazing content and programs. And especially if you're struggling or know someone who is, be sure to connect them. Now, as the author of The Hormone Fix and your girlfriend, doctor, and, and the author of Keto Green 16, and working on another book for all of you, I want to hear from you. I want you to email us, email us for my, at my team at dranacabeca.com and say you were listening to my podcast and you'd like to hear more about this subject, or you'd like me to weigh in on you know, another subject that's dear in, to your heart or something, maybe it's related to keto green 16 or the hormone fix. I think it's really, really important that, you know, we start having open, more open and honest conversations. So I want to hear from you, my beloved community and continue to connect in this way, shamelessly, guiltlessly, openly, honestly, and authentically and the more I can know what you're struggling with or what you'd like my way in on, the better I can help serve you. So I want you to also be um, sharing 
your experiences in being Keto Green. If you haven't already, Keto Green 16, a best-selling book and our amazing Keto Green community, as well as the Hormone Fix with the chapters, chapter eight on stress and cortisol and chapter 10 on vaginal health, which is critically, again, critically important. And yes, in Keto Green 16, I did put in a men's health chapter as well. So I, I look forward to hearing from you and thank you for being on my podcast. This is Dr. Anna Kabeca, the Girlfriend Doctor. Bye till next time.